I will no longer recommend it. I'm not using it myself anymore and it can go die in a fire for all I care. Macro tracking apps. We all use one at some point. Some people spend way more time using one than I think they probably should. And I think there's this natural tendency among bodybuilders, we kind of gravitate towards the same one or two options. But in researching this segment, I found a whole bunch of options that are way better than what most people would consider to be the gold standard. We're gonna cover that and a little bit more on top of that in this episode of The Drop Set. It's 2.55, let's hit it. What's up everybody? Real quick before we jump in here, just a quick reminder, follow this show on Instagram at The Drop Set Podcast. Leave your messages there, shoot an audio message, video message, let me know what's on your mind, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, leave a comment with some questions or anything that you wanna see in future episodes. So, let's get to it. Hello to everybody out there in podcast land. Darren Starr here, thank you for joining me. This is The Drop Set, episode 255. To those watching on YouTube, hi. Thanks for coming here or coming back. Uh, this video is gonna be a little bit more lightly edited, very lightly edited compared to most things on this channel. Uh, designed to be just a little bit more free flowing for the audio only audience. Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, please uh, leave a review or a rating on whatever app you're listening on. It would help me out a ton as far as growing this show is concerned. Um, and you can also hit me up uh, at Darren underscore star on Instagram or the podcast, specifically at The Drop Set Podcast on Instagram. Love to hear any comments that anybody has and also just follow along for stuff that I'm doing there. So let's uh, dig in. It is episode 255. What do we have inside the episode? It's May 3rd. I'm recording this on April 29th, a whole four days in advance because the second segment that we're going to be covering here is my upcoming travel. I'm leaving on Wednesday, going to Oregon to visit family, and I will be spending a week out there by the time this episode posts, I will be five weeks out from my show, so deep in prep. That'll be about 17 weeks into prep at that point for me. And so every day has to be perfect. What have I done to ensure that this trip is gonna be successful? What am I thinking about as far as potential roadblocks or hazard points on this trip as well? We're gonna cover that. But also, we're gonna talk about the best and the worst macro tracking apps out there. So. While this is on YouTube, for those watching it, um, I am going to uh, not leverage video for this, but I'm gonna be referencing my phone quite a bit, simply because I've looked at so many of these apps recently, they all bleed together and look the same until I actually pull it up and then I can visually differentiate. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that here, but let's dig in here. So uh, yeah, 255, there is indeed an app for that, whatever we wanna do, pretty much. So uh, some people are resistant to that, some people wanna use pencil and paper. I take the opposite approach here that I do with workout logging. With work, workout logging, I'm like, don't use an app, use pen and paper. The reason for that is because phones are distracting and uh, they don't really do anything um, other than give you a place where you can log it that you're already carrying around with you. But a pen and paper I find to be a lot more utilitarian when it comes to workout logs, easily plugging in notes that you want, easily comparing back to what you've done previous weeks, assuming that you have formatted your logbook correctly. Um, when it comes to tracking macros, there's math involved and you need a food database, the app just makes sense. So yes, I am contradicting myself a little bit. I'm not anti-app, I am anti-app when it comes to logging your workouts. When it comes to logging your food, it's the clear winner here. So pen and paper is just way too cumbersome. You have to do, there's more chance for math errors. And um, also, uh, the one of the biggest problems with a lot of the apps that we're gonna see here today are that uh, they just have bad data built into them. But if you're on pen and paper, you're looking those values up somewhere so you can still come across bad data. It doesn't solve that problem. Um, I've seen a lot of clients who will send me um, their meal plans and it's all built into a spreadsheet. That's the same thing as pen and paper. Yeah, it can do some of the math for you, but it's still like, it's a lot of work. And if you get the right app, which we're gonna cover here, um, it's, uh, it's worth it. It's worth it. So um, let's start with the also rands. We have about, I think there's about 10 or 11 apps that I wanna cover here today, um, ranging from the super shitty to the exceptional. And so, and we're gonna hear some familiar names in here and they may not, may not land where you think they're gonna land. So these are the apps that didn't make the cut. So we're gonna 
pull up the first one here, which I'm actually not going to pull up, it's Lose It. I did not really look at Lose It very closely uh, because the free version only tracks calories. It doesn't even track macros. It's not a macro, acting, ad, macro tracking app unless you pay for it. And honestly, I didn't want to spend 40 bucks for the year to, <laughs> to be able to judge its utility for this, um, just for this episode. So I didn't do it. So um, for what we're doing, you have to have the premium version. You can't get away with... Uh, with a, uh, a free version, uh, just because calories, that's, that's great, but we need macro tracking specifically. So I kind of felt like Lose It disqualified itself uh, before it even really had a chance to enter into the race. Maybe it's great. I don't know. Um, I am kind of taking a little bit of the lazy approach on that. I have had clients who have used it before and um, nobody ever championed it like, this is great. It's just what they were using for whatever reason. So I don't, I, based on what I read about it uh, and I, I did look through some screenshots and some other things of it, I didn't see anything in there that made me think like, yeah, yeah, I should check that out. So I didn't. Uh, track by Nutritionix. So this one, I'm going to have trouble finding some of these here. Here we go. Yeah, this one is, is weird. So this is entirely free. There is no paid version of this app. You can't send the money if you want to, which I can appreciate that. It is limited to four meals. So you have breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. You can't rename those. You can't reorder those. You can't add post-workout or anything like that. Um, and again, there's no paid version where you can get more. You're stuck with four meals and that's it. Um, I get a lot of food logs from clients. Um, this might be a limitation in my fitness pal, which we'll cover later in the free version. I don't know. I've had the premium, premium version of it for years um, where you can only have four because I get a lot of things where it's like these three meals and then snack. And it's clearly like two or three meals worth of stuff. I'm like, are you having that all at the same time or is that at different times? So the four meal limit thing isn't unheard of, but it's also like really, really crippling. And if you eat more than four meals a day, do not use an app that limits you to only four meals a day. It's gonna get confusing, it's gonna get cumbersome, and it's just stupid. Um, also, if you're only eating four meals a day, I would probably strongly encourage you to go to five, depending on what your protein intake is. That can work out for a lot of different reasons. Um, you have to set targets um, for your macros based on calorie and percentage. I think uh, my fitness pal, the free version, may be similar to this. Uh, so you basically say like, okay, I'm gonna have 2,200 calories and it's gonna be a 40, 30, 30 split. Um, I, I hate that as a coach, because I'm not giving people percentage splits in a calorie number. I'm saying your protein is set at 245 grams. Your carbs are set at 215 grams. Your fats are set at 60. So I need an app that will allow people to plug in those targets explicitly. Um, the interface in this app is fairly smart. I did put in a note that um, repeated searches get stupid because it doesn't save what you type or anything like that. So if I just, uh, I have a couple of foods that I just kind of use as a, uh, kind of a, a standard thing just to kind of see how these apps pull them up and track it. Um, of course, I have the wrong pair of glasses for this and my fingers are fat and I can't type well. So yeah, so let's say I pull that up. Okay, cool. So I do a search and one of the, the benchmark foods that I use is um, Oikos Pro Vanilla Greek Yogurt. So, you know, I know what the numbers are supposed to be. I want to see if it's accurate. I want to see if the app can find it if I type in Oikos Pro. So this one does. It pulls it up here. Uh, it is not the correct serving size, I don't think. Let me change that here and see. Is that correct now? Those numbers look correct. Yep. Okay. So, but let's say I pull that up and it's like, oh yeah, that's not, uh, that's not the right one. I go back and I have to type in my search again. So you, you type in your search, it takes you to search results, you look at a food, ooh, that's not the one, go back, you have to start your search over again. It doesn't take you to the list of search results. So if you're hunting for a food, you're gonna be retyping in the same name. Over. It's just a dumb, dumb, dumb interface. Um, and honestly, like I spend enough time when I'm tracking things, just browsing for foods multiple times, looking at multiple options. That alone is a deal breaker before me. Um, you, you deal breaker for me. You can select, um, if you pull up a food here. So again, I have to search for that food again and pull it up. And so here we go. Oikos pro great. So, uh, by default, it comes up in the portion size is three quarters of a cup. Well, if I click on cup, I have an option here 
to change that to grams. So it will allow me to go for mass or volume, which is nice. It doesn't give me a lot of other options beyond that. Um, but I found that I think most of the foods in this database, it does give you a volume or a mass option, which is kind of nice. Um, I just, you know, the formula limit and the fact that the search is so, so stupid, that's it, just a non-starter for me, as well as not being able to explicitly set macro targets. So this one also to the scrap heap. My Macros Plus. This one is... Um, it had some, some more things going for it. Where is it here? Here we go. All right. So um, there is no free version. You have to pay $3 for this app. $3. Okay. And then there's another version, like you can pay an extra $2 per month or $20 per year. And then that adds some minor functionality beyond that. And I don't think there was anything in there that I felt was essential. I did not do that. So I'm just looking at the, the small, uh, some paid version here. Um, the search feature on this I wrote is very dumb, much like the last one, because if I type in a food, uh, that is not, um, spelled, and uh, has words in the same sequence as what I typed in, um, it's not gonna pull up. <laughs> so the, like there's no intelligence to the search at all. Just incredibly frustrating. Um, really hard to find the right kind of foods. Um, if you plan on barcode scanning everything, that's something. Um, so like I type, I type in Oikos Pro and it gives me a whole bunch of different brands for some reason. Then I type in Oikos Pro Vanilla and everything that comes up is vanilla almond milk. Um, Here's one that looks like it might be correct. No, it's not. I can tell from the macros, the carbs are way higher than the correct product is. Then for some reason, we have a carb balanced flour tortilla that shows up in search. Um, so I'm looking, I'm looking for something that has the right macros here. Looking, looking, looking. Hearty muffins. Okay. Yeah, Oikos triple zero vanilla, okay, but this is like, it says 15 grams of protein, 14 grams of carbs. Those are not correct. So uh, I'm, I'm spending all this time just trying to find a food where if I type in those three words, it should be the first thing that comes up. So the search feature is dumb. Um, also, let's say I just pick this thing here. And uh, so this is, <laughs> this says Oikos vanilla protein, eight grams, carbs, 13. I'm like, I don't know what they're looking at here. Uh, it does not allow for multiple um, units of measurement. So um, every food has a certain unit of measurement assigned to it, and you can't change that. So for this one, this is one serving, which means I could say two servings, three servings, but I don't know what a serving is. Maybe it's just a small individual container. I don't know. Um, but here, um, yeah, so this one says one container, okay? And I click on that to change it. And in a lot of apps, it'll say you can change the number and you can also change the unit. So instead of container, it might say serving, ounce, grams, cup, whatever. Um, this doesn't give you that. So uh, that to me is a critical feature. So every single one of these has one unit attached to it and that's it. I found one here. These numbers are still not correct, but the unit is one cup. Okay. So I, t I type on that and I can change the number, but I can't change the cup. And I always like to weigh this stuff out in grams because I don't want to dirty a measuring cup. I just put my bowl on the scale and scoop it in there until I get the correct gram reading. Um, this doesn't allow me to do that. So um, you are stuck with whatever unit is attached to whatever food is programmed in the database. And there's only one. Uh, if you're searching for proteins, it does not specify cooked versus uncooked. So you assume everything is raw, but also I could not find any data for cooked protein sources, which for me, kind of a problem, kind of a problem. So uh, it's just not a serious contender in my book, mostly just because of how stupid the search feature is and how much time you're going to waste digging through this pages and pages and pages of crap to find something that might be buried or not there at all when based on the, the words that you type in should be the first thing up on the list. So non-starter for me there. Noom. So let's talk about Noom. This is one that came up in searches as being very popular. Um, and I'm not sure why. So now to be clear, I did not get into, uh, I did not get into the actual app. So, um, it has a free seven day trial. It's only paid beyond that. And it's ranges somewhere between 130 and $210 per year. So very expensive. And even for the cheapest version, I don't know what graduation of features there is at those different levels here. Um, the thing that gets me though, is this questionnaire to start. Um, it looks like it's going to be about a 20 to 30 minute questionnaire. I did not make it all the way through. So that's why I did not actually get into the app. So some questions here, 
what is your weight loss goal? So you have lose X pounds for good. There's three different options there. Maintain weight and get fit. I haven't decided yet. I say I haven't decided yet. And there's this little progress bar that shows up on the questionnaire. And when I answer that first question, uh, it, I can see like there's a little sliver of that progress bar that got filled in. This thing's got to be like 50 questions. Sex and hormones impact how our bodies metabolize food. Which sex best describes you? Male, I guess. People may identify themselves with more than just sex and hormones. What gender you, do, I, do you identify with? I'm a man. I'm boring. Okay. What is your age? Like all this stuff is, is very boilerplate stuff that they need to know. What's your height? It's a sore subject. What's your current weight? Also a sore subject, 213 pounds. Your daily schedule and routines can affect your weight. How would you describe your lifestyle? So here, I know it's going to try and do a TDEE calculation. Whenever it does that, that's when apps go off the rails. Um, so whenever you have an app where you're, um, where you're relying on it to make a TDEE calculation, it's always fucked um, because these multipliers can be so far off, it's ridiculous. So I'm employed full-time. Sure. I said employed full-time. There we go. What describes your current status? Married, in a relationship, single. Why the fuck? Okay. I'm still married somehow. Um, as a man in your 40s, your environment can play a major role in your ability to lose weight. Is that not true for anybody at any age? Uh, so part of it is just like, I think this questionnaire is stupid. Um, what best describes the area you live in? Uh, I hesitate to call Knoxville a major city, uh, but it is uh, suburbs, I guess. Do you have an active diagnosis of an eating disorder? No. Okay. So do you have kids? No. Are you at any risk of the following? testosterone deficiency, heart disease or stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, depression, other, none, none. Okay. You're in good hands. Thanks. All right. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Who is your health insurance provider? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even know. It changes all the time. I think it's Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. What's your ideal weight you want to reach? I don't know, 204 pounds, I guess, maybe. I'm, I'm thinking for the show here. I, I got five weeks. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let's go back. What recommended weight range, 136 to 179. So it thinks that a guy who's 5'11 and 47 could have an appropriate weight at 136 pounds. I'm pretty sure that's anorexic. Like, that is not appropriate. Uh, okay, yep, yep, yep. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so on this little progress bar here at the top, after all this, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections. I have completed the first section just now. Uh... Which below best describes your current priorities? I am only focused on losing weight. I'd like to gain some muscle while I lose fat. That's a pipe dream. Gaining muscle is more important to me than losing fat. I'm only focused on losing weight right now. So contest prep is not an option, shockingly. Um, what area do you want to focus on your plan? Nutrition, physical activity, building good habits, other. Nutrition, sure. Uh, having something to look forward to can be a big motivator to stick to your plan. Uh, bodybuilding show is not on here, so I'm going to say other. What is the event? Oh, it wants me to pick a date. All right, June 8th. God, don't worry, I'm about done with this. I'm just going to see how long I can, I can stick with this before I lose my patience completely. Uh, what is the main reason for wanting to lose weight? Improve physical appearance. Uh-huh, well, that describes you. My diet and activity need a lot of work. I have some healthy habits. I mostly eat well and stay active. I would say I mostly eat well, well and stay active, yes. Uh, this is your plan, blah, blah, blah. So knowing you as only you can, which would you prefer as fast as possible, slow and steady wins the race somewhere in between the two. Um, I don't know what their definition of slow and steady wins the race is. Uh, okay. Yes. Are you currently taking a GLP one? No. <sighs> Man. Okay. For some reason now, calculating weight loss pace. And there's this progress bar at the bottom of the screen that is slowly moving. You, you, get, you, you get it, right? We can, I can even cut out this crap. So um, it, says, it says I can do it by July 14th, so not by June 8th. Oh, it says, uh, it says I can barely make 209 by June 8th. Oh, okay. Point being here, this app, uh, my, my note here says it's smarter than we want but it's dumber than we need it to be at the same time. So I can't even get into the point. I don't, I don't know that it tracks anything. It might just create a meal plan for you. I don't know. It is clearly a lifestyle app. Um, it is not a macro tracking app by all appearances here. So it goes to the trash pile as well. Now, 
Let's talk in with some of the contenders here. This is where things get interesting because um, any of these apps I would consider to be workable. Um, some are a little bit more limited in the free version. Um, at least one doesn't have a free version also. Um, and I have a note here about video tutorials being available in the next chapter. So this is actually a, uh, this is something that I stole from an upcoming course, Macro Boot Camp, where I will have walkthrough tutorials on all of these apps as well. So um, if you're curious about that, you can always check out 5starDigital.com and read all about Macro Boot Camp for when it's released, which I'm slating for like a July 1 release right now. So let's go in here and let's talk about my fitness pal. So it's a 800 pound gorilla um, among bodybuilders, it's probably the gold standard. Um, but what you're gonna learn today is that among the contenders, it is probably the shittiest one. And um, as of a couple days ago, I canceled my subscription to it and I've stopped using it completely and I will never touch it again. So um, the free version has some massive limitations. Um, I don't believe you can set macro targets. The barcode scanner is not enabled in it. And that's, the, they're giving, um, they're giving market share away to their competitors because that barcode scanner is so useful that any app that includes it in the free version gets a leg up on MyFitnessPal. The only reason MyFitnessPal is still around is name recognition. It is the shittiest app of the ones that are fully functioned and can actually do the stuff that we need it to do. It's $80 a year, very buggy in spots. Um, it's also very slow to respond sometimes. Um, I've had it happen many times. This may be something just on the Android version of the app. I don't know. But I've had it happen many times where uh, I will go to delete a food and then I go to add something else and I back out and my carbs or fats are way too high because the food that I deleted has magically reappeared. And if you're not really closely paying attention, you can end up royally fucking up your plan just because it's deciding to undo some shit that you already done. Um, it's really, really annoying when that happens. And it's just like navigating through and doing everything. It's just slow. It's cumbersome. The food database is horrific. Um, like you will never search for a food in MyFitnessPal and have something correct and usable and accurate come up as the first choice. Um, it's just a mess. It's an absolute fucking mess of an app. Um, honestly, I thought about, out of spite, just dumping this into the also rans category just because I think their day has passed. There are better options available that are cheaper or free. And I think it's time that everybody kind of shift towards those. So I will no longer recommend it. I'm not using it myself anymore. Um, and it can go die in a fire for all I care. So my fitness pal, eh, screw you. Your day is done. Yeah, as, uh, to the extent that you were ever the king, you are the king no more. You are now a peasant. You are a serf. You now get a scrape horse shit out of the stables. That's your job. Next chronometer S I C because there's no H in chronometer. Um, so among nerdy bodybuilders, this is now the gold standard. So there is a free version and a paid version. The free version is fully functional for the most part. There are a couple of features, um, that are not present in there, which I did not find to be really deal breakers. Um, but there's ads in the, uh, in the free version that are gone in the paid version. So that is Chronometer Gold, which is $55 a year. Now, the makers of Chronometer make uh, wild claims about the accuracy of their food database. Um, and the thing, like they do that, let me go add food, and let me just say, you know, search all foods. I'm just gonna say 93.7 Turkey. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so ground turkey, lean, 7% fat, 93% lean meat. Great, all right, is that cooked or raw? Well, the next database entry says raw. And then this one says pan broiled crumbles. Great, so whenever I measure ground turkey, I've already cooked up four pounds of it, I'm measuring out cooked. So that's what I'm gonna pick. So it says that this comes from the USDA database. Now, I did a little bit of research, however, and looking through the USDA food database, I could not find these exact numbers um, that they have for this. The one thing that I will give um, chronometer credit for is they actually do a much better job of tracking micronutrients. So vitamins, minerals, electrolytes, et cetera. Um, like the, it, this uh, serving of turkey here has 300 milligrams of potassium, which is great. If you did that in MyFitnessPal, I guarantee you potassium would not be listed there. So um, what's, uh, is this is for 100 grams, it says. So um, let's go grams, let's type in a number here. Let's say one, oh lordy. What's my typical serving here? 830. Jeez, I don't want to bust out my calculator. Let's just say it's 200 grams. It's not, but we're going to say that. So now it says uh, 
54 grams of protein seems high 23 grams of protein this is going to be uh, something that's an issue with this food in all apps where it cannot calculate how much of the fat gets cooked out um, so Typically, what I would do is I would reduce that fat content by about 30% just to account for all the grease that bakes out. Um, what I do is uh, usually once it's about you know 75% of the way cooked, I actually take all that and drain it out so it's gone. So um, the fat content is going to be lower than this. But again, that's not something that I would expect an app to know how to do. So I also know that if I go over on my fats by about 10 grams for the day, I'm not really too worried about it because this is a staple item. It's in there every day. Well, maybe not 10, but maybe seven, seven or so, six or seven. I'm not too worried about that. So um, anyway, the micronutrient profile for this is great. So high in iron, higher in B12, um, potassium is high. Uh, I mean, it's very detailed here, but these exact numbers, I could not find these exact numbers, these macro numbers in the USDA food database. So I question what database they're really pulling from. I'm sure it is, but apparently the USDA has multiple multiple um, food databases. So it is not in the one that is publicly available. And then they have other options here, NCCDB, CRDB. I used to know what these stood for, but I can't remember right now. Um, so anyway, it's okay. Um, my biggest issue with chronometer is it's very dull looking. <laughs> it's very dull looking and uh, it's just not fun to use. Like it feels kind of like you're using an app. Like if you've ever had a college course where you had to use some computer program that was like custom built for the course, it kind of feels like that. Like, I don't know if I'd say that cheap is the, uh, is the feeling, but it just feels a little too perfunctory, a little too intellectual almost. Like it's not designed with a user experience in mind. And the thing is, like a user experience matters because you're going to be using this app all the time. And if it's an app that you just tolerate, you're going to get sick of tracking stuff. Or if it's an app that, you know, just has a little bit better like tactile feedback when you tap on something and it just responds in a certain snappy way, has a certain look to it. It's more appealing to use. We'll get to a good example of that later on here. Um, you're going to be more consistent with tracking. Chronometer gives me none of that. I get no dopamine kick uh, using this app at all, um, which I get it. It's not, every app's job to, you know, help you get your jollies off or anything like that. But point being, an app should be kind of fun to use, right? And this one is not. This, this feels very much like I'm in a college class and uh, not one that I'm enjoying. So um, also it does use net carbs by default and turning that off, finding the switch for that is very cumbersome. I don't even know if I could do it again right now. So go more targets. Is it under energy settings? No, because that's where I thought it would be. Um, it was not in there. Macronutrient settings, carbs, carbohydrate tracking, track carbohydrates, total carbs. I changed that. So if you go to net carbs, then you can have, you can choose what gets subtracted as net carbs. So fiber, sugar, alcohols, allulose, fructose. Um, so it, there's good flexibility there, but it's just a little cumbersome to turn that off. So. Anyway, it's not a bad choice, um, and this is a lot of personal preference. So um, anyway, it, my point for this whole episode, I think, is if you're using MyFitnessPal, find a better option because they're out there. <laughs> and the free version of this gives you all the functionality that you need. All these apps have barcode scanners in them. It is not a free-only version in Chronometer. Um, and uh, you can find a better option. So play around with these. And if based on my description, you think like, eh, maybe Chronometer isn't for me. Or you might think like, man, Darren sounds like a fucking diva. That app sounds great. Awesome. You might be absolutely right. So check it out. Um, it'd probably be worth it. Next up, Eat This Much. This is a different kind of app. And my client, Jason, turned me on to this a while back, um, something that he uses. And I am, no, I don't want premium. Um, I'll keep this up, though, because there is a free version. There is a premium version. The free version is very, very fully featured, though. There aren't really any significant limitations with it. Um, what the paid version lets you do is plan for a week of stuff at a time. It'll create grocery lists, uh, grocery lists and um something specific to this app is it can also help you with leftover calculations because it's very much a meal creation app first and a macro tracking app second. Um, so if you're somebody who wants some inspiration for your macros, eat this much is your choice. It is the app for you because you can say, here are my numbers, build me a fucking meal plan and it will do it. And you can specify your preferences here. If I go in and let me uh, adjust dietary preferences here. Hold on. Preferences. 
diet nutrition, primary dietary type, anything, keto, vegetarian, vegan, paleo, Mediterranean, anything. Great. Cool. Food exclusions. All right. So it gives you this nice list here of foods and uh, my exclusions. So common exclusions, gluten, peanuts, eggs, fish, tree nuts, dairy, soy, shellfish. So I checked a couple of those. Um, and then eggs, you can pick grains. Um, so there's a section for grains. You can say all grains, which highlights everything. Breakfast cereals, pastas, breads. Can I just like say I want breakfast cereals and not exclude them and just like build that into every meal? That'd be great. Pastas, breads, rice, oatmeal, sugar, soy products. So soy, tofu, soy milk, red meat. You can specify pork, veal, lamb, all red meat, beef, poultry, fish, shellfish, mayo, fats and nuts, legumes, fruits. Like all of these are categories of foods where you can go through and specify like vegetables. I'm good with vegetables. Don't give me artichokes. Don't give me eggplant. Uh, don't give me beets. Those would be the three that I would check. Um, because it's going to build you it's going to build you a fucking meal plan. And the reason it asks you about all these foods is because it will use all of them. Um, so if I say, let's go to planner here, generate day. Boom. Here we go. All right. Now the problem here is I'm not sure that, um, yeah, it does have my macros, uh, added in here. I think, um, let me go back to preferences. I might need to adjust those nutrition targets. So I have, it, it, it needs a range on things. So it's not going to give you exact values. So that that's for me as a coach, I don't like that too much. Um, so like my carbs, somewhere between 190 and 220. It's a pretty big range. Um, fat, somewhere between 50 and 63. Protein, 280 to 290. Um, but this meal plan that it gave me here has my protein at 248. Carbs are in range, fats are in range, protein's low. So not thrilled with that. Now, uh, breakfast, blueberry, almond butter, protein smoothie. Okay. Let me click on that. What is this? What the fuck is this? Um, yes. Okay. It's giving me all the tutorial stuff here. That's fine. Um, so, um, water, organic, plain rice, protein, almond butter, ice cubes, blueberries. Okay, cool. Directions. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Combine all ingredients in a blender and pulse. So that's hard. And then cantaloupe, two slices. Great. Uh, two wedge, medium, one eighth of medium wedge melon, 138 grams. Okay. 140 grams of cantaloupe. Great. Not a fan of cantaloupe. So, um, I would say like breakfast, I'd be like, no, not so much. Um, can we like regenerate that meal somehow? Um, there is a way to do that. I'm not sure where it is, but there is a function where you can say like, I don't like this meal. Give me a new one. List alternatives. Here it is. So coconut mango, tropical green smoothie. Apples. Uh, yeah. Oatmeal banana pancakes. Hmm. Orange banana and kale smoothie. Okay. Now we're talking. We're, um, kale. Eh. Egg white oatmeal with blueberries. Hmm. Orange banana and kale smoothie. So it has a few things that it definitely likes. Microwave vanilla banana oat cake. Orange banana and grape smoothie. That sounds pretty good. So these are all options. And, you know, based on what it gives you here, you can also see the macros. Like that one has 13 grams of protein, 75 grams of carbs. So, the one thing that this app is not going to do is adhere to my rule, which is where you want your protein evenly distributed throughout the day. Uh, so I don't want a meal that has 13 grams of protein and then another one here that has, this one has 60. Like I'd want to even that out a little bit. But like lunch is Indian flavored pounded chicken with classic fruit salad. Okay. Lime chicken salad, black bean soup with lime. All right, cool. So, I mean, you know, they're decent options and I would honestly use this just as not necessarily like... This app has its uses. Like there are certain people that are going to be drawn to this. Um, the problem is like it's going to create a shopping nightmare and you have to have the paid version to actually have it generate a grocery list for you. That's kind of limiting. Um, and it's $15 a month, $60 for the year. Uh, you can also say like, okay, here's my daily macro targets. I have logged three or four of those meals, but for my fourth and or fifth meal, I want you to generate some options to, to kind of fill in the gaps on my numbers here. And it can do that too. So you don't have to generate the whole meal uh, or the whole day. You can do part of it yourself. You can track that and then have it. So I can just like log breakfast, log lunch, log dinner, snack, generate that. You know, you can do it that way as well. And you can kind of piecemeal it together. It does have a really good um, web-based interface as well, which might be a little bit easier for some people than using the app. Um, honestly, I, I like this. And since it is free, like the meal generation version of this is free uh, or, or meal generation portion of this is free, um, 
you can also just use this as inspiration. You know, if you're like, oh, what do I get here? I don't know. So you could, you could actually go in and say, uh, you know, if you're using some other app, be like, I got this one meal left. I need 50 grams of protein, 30 grams of carbs, and 15 grams of fat. You can just go into eat this much and set that as your daily target and say, generate a meal. Um, and you can also specify like, oh, for breakfast, I actually don't want a breakfast food. I want more like a dinner type food. So those are all things that you can do in here. It's a really good app. Um, it's not quite what I want, but uh, there's a lot of people out there who would find um, really, really a lot of utility in this. Um, the paid version also does like family planning for creating family meals. Like I said, leftover management. So you'll build larger ones and then it will roll some of that into the next day as well for a meal too. So um, it can do some very cool stuff. It's pretty sophisticated. Uh, macros first is the next one. As I find it here in my giant list of apps, where the hell is it? This one, um, does have the, the coolest feature I've seen in an app. Um, so the free version is very limited. Um, so, and it's $12 a month, $80 for a year. So my fitness pal kind of pricing there, um, I do believe, however, if I go to, this is one thing I did not check on this. If I go lunch, add a food, hit the barcode scanner, and yes, it does come up. So um, like I said, MyFitnessPal giving up market share by making that a paid feature. So macros first, it's available in the free version. Um, if you can get by with four meals, like I strongly recommend if you eat five meals to have an app that supports five meals. I just think that's kind of a no-brainer, realistically. So um now this one, if I go here and let's just say we're adding rolled oats here, cool. So, um, and I want to uh, add how much of it. So I, I talked about unit selection before and how um, some apps just give you one unit for each food. Like you can get a serving or a cup, that's it. Um, one of them uh, gave you either like, a, you know, a, a mass version or a volume version. Well, for this one, for rolled oats, I can say, well, grams, teaspoon, tablespoon, fluid ounces, cup, milliliters, ounces, pound, um, like a lot of options here. So grams, I'll just go in, type in 80. Does that look correct? Yes, it does. Awesome. So 80 grams is a cup of dry oats. Um, so you've got a lot of variety for the units. Now here's the thing. Let me add that food to my day here. You do have to hit two buttons, which is kind of confusing. You say add food, and then it takes you back to the page where it's building that meal. So then you say, oh, no, log it as well. So it's a little confusing. And it's really easy to back out of that and then not actually add it to your thing. So one of those things where you get used to it after a little while. But let's say now that put me over for the day. It's like, oh, I have too many carbs now. Shit. So here is the brilliant feature. Um, it says oatmeal, blah, blah, blah. Gives me the description. Gives me the serving size. Protein, 10. Carbs, 54. Fat, 6. Well, I can type in the C for carbs and say, I'm over by 14, so make it 40 grams of carbs. Boom, it's reduced my portion size to 58.82 grams. So we'll call it 59, we'll call it 60. So instead of playing the guess and check game that I think we've all done a billion times where you're like, oh, 80 grams is too much. What about 70? Oh, no, too much. What about 60? There we go. Like you just type in the carb amount that you want and it automatically adjusts your portion size for you. I've not found any other app that does that. That feature alone, if this had five meals in, uh, per day in the free version, I would, I would do it. I, would, I like this app. I think it's great. Um, so the interface is another thing. Like it looks, it responds fine. I think the search feature is fine. Um, it's a little bit easier to navigate through days and weeks than it is in MyFitnessPal as well. Like I can just swipe left or right on the top banner of the screen, go from this week to next week to the following week. Um, and where you have data in, uh, like if you haven't logged anything for a while, but then you have a day where you have logged it, this is how I operate because I only log my food every now and then. Um, and then I follow that plan indefinitely until it's time to change something. And then the way I've used my fitness pal in the past is I have to go back and find what was the last day I logged. Okay, select all those, copy that to today, and then make my changes from there. Well, this puts a green dot underneath this list of days where anything that has something logged in it will have that green dot in there. So I can easily see like when was the last day I logged at a glance. So I can go back one, two, three weeks. Oh, there it is. Cool. So a lot faster that way. Um, interface looks a little cartoony. Uh, check it out. Again, this is Macros First. It's a good app. The, the main issue that I have with it is it's a formula day, formula day limitation. So I'd have to use the free, the premium version, which same as my fitness pal, as far as the cost is concerned, which I was already paying. So eh, I like it. And I would totally use this app 
if it were not for the existence of Macro Factor, which is my absolute top choice. It is the new app that, I is, that I'm using as of Saturday. And prior to Saturday, I'd never heard of it. So uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. The issue here, and for anything that I've dinged for having, um, you know, oh, paid version to get these features, this is only paid. Like, you don't pay for the app, but the, you then have to buy the, the app is free to download, but it doesn't do anything without a subscription. So it's $12 a month, $48 for six months, $72 for a year. So a little cheaper than my fitness pal. Um, it does have this, what it calls an intelligent algorithm for determining your TDEE, -E, uh, your total daily energy expenditure. As I mentioned before in, I think it was when I was talking about Noom or whatever, um, none of those algorithms are intelligent. They all follow the same two or three formulas and they're all stupid. So <laughs> you can like, we're going to throw that away. Um, now by default, it wants to be your coach. It wants to take you through everything and set your targets for you based on what you tell it. And it took some hunting to figure out how to turn that off and say, no, I want manual targets. Where is it? It's under more. And I think it's under food logger. Show overages, weights, go to food builder. Yeah. Like it wants to, um, it wants to log, um, or it wants to build meals for you as well. Um, has different themes that you can use, which is kind of cool. I did not notice that before. Um, yeah, where is it? Is it under profile? No. See, I mean, aha, I found it. I found it. So under, stra under strategy, uh, if you click on new program, then you can say coached, collaborative, or manual. So manual is what we want. And so then at that point, you have the ability to set your macro targets. So um, now I've already done this. I can say new program here and design program every day, day by day. So you can set the same macro targets for all days, or you can specify, no, I have high carb days and low carb days, and you can plug in exactly what those numbers are, which is super cool. So I plugged in Tuesday and Sunday as being my low carb days. I plugged in all those numbers. And so now it shows me on this nice little color coded graph here. Uh, every day, uh, my protein is at 275. Every day, my fats are at 60. And then I have days where my carbs are at 135 or at 220. Um, the bars are a little misleading because it looks like I have more protein on the days when I have lower carbs, but it's just because they're all designed to fill up the same amount of vertical space. So it scales things a little bit. So, um, I was able to set up those numbers in here, which is great. Um, like I said, it, it did take a little doing here. Now here's the cool thing. Um, and I might plug in a screenshot of this if I'm thinking about it for the uh, YouTube viewers here. So, uh, when you go to food log here, I'm going to go back to, uh, I'll go to tomorrow since I've already pre-populated tomorrow as a low carb day. Um, you don't log foods by meals. You log by time of day, which is great. Um, so my first meal, I just put it at seven and I put four foods in there at seven. And I log my post-workout meal at 11. I put in my two foods there. And so then it shows you like all the hours in between. And then you can very easily just say, no, hide all the hours where I don't have stuff logged. So you're just looking at the meals. Um, it's really cool. The search feature and the food entry feature on this is so fast and brilliant. Like I was logging all this stuff yesterday. And, you know, I don't really enjoy using these macro tracking apps. Um, but I was logging my meals yesterday just to uh, Saturday just to try and figure this stuff out. And like I logged my whole day, I'm like, cool, let me log a, a, a low carb day as well. And it was so fast and so breezy. Like whatever I was searching for was pretty much always the first thing that came up on the list. The numbers were always accurate. I tried the barcode scanner, worked great. Um, and the, the thing is like the database, it, it feels like it's all built onto the phone. Like it's not relying on uh, internet connectivity just because it's so fast. Like it's instantaneous. You search for something, boom, here's a list of stuff. And the app is so snappy. Like you click on something, it just shows up. Very easy to modify. Like if I wanted to add, let's just throw something in here. Uh, I'll do my old staple here, rolled oats. Great. So, um, yep, that's it. That's what we want there. So it pulls up the list here and it shows you calories. Cool. Um, impact on targets. And it can say, well, this is going to contribute to 2% of your daily protein, 5% um, of your daily fats, blah, blah, blah. Here's the breakdown on where everything's coming from, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So serving size, click that down at the bottom. Um, and it gives you a little, um, 
left right slider menu here where you can say pound serving ounce grams so um, depending on what the food is all of those options are context sensitive to the food so um, there may be fewer or more of those available but it's always the appropriate one so i would say grams cool and then um, as soon as you select something it automatically highlights the number you don't have to tap on it and you can just say 40 add boom and there it is and then you say log food done um, it's it's really really easy I love the interface on this. The app just looks cool. It's fun to use. Um, the one thing that did take me a little bit to figure out was the whole copy days feature like I use in my fitness pal all the time. It's not quite as intuitive here, but it works. What you have to do is go to the day that you want to copy and select all the foods there and then advance to the day you want to paste it to and then say, okay, paste inline all meals. Um, so it, it's a little cumbersome, but once you figure it out, it's easy enough. So, um, I just absolutely freaking love this app. Um, it's my new favorite. Um, I would love it if there was a free version, even if the functionality was maybe a little bit more limited, but since I was already paying for my fitness pal premium, um, this is uh, kind of an obvious choice from there. Uh, beyond that, I think eat this much is super functional, super functional. I think macros first is great. I think chronometer is okay. Um, I think my fitness pal is a turd. So, um, that's pretty much where I'm at on that. That's how I come down. So hopefully you got something out of this. If you use an app already and you haven't tried one of these, I'd recommend giving them a shot and seeing how it treats you. And I'd be curious to hear some feedback from people on your thoughts on some of these. This is all just one man's opinion. Um, I don't claim to be right, but I do claim to say that this is how I feel. So I'd be curious to hear your thoughts if you have a chance to play around with any of these. Whew. All right, quick break here. I just wanted to remind everybody, check out fivestarphysique.com. You can read about everything that I do there as far as coaching, have workout programs available, some merch, et cetera, all kinds of cool stuff. You can also check out fivestardigital.com where I have all of my online courses available. Right now, I'm working on Bikini Blueprint, Hypertrophy University, Macro Boot Camp, Men's Physique Blueprint, all kinds of stuff going on there. Those courses are gonna start to become available June 1st of this year year. I'm working my tail off getting those things ready for prime time. You can actually go there right now, pre-order those courses if you want, or hit me up through Five Star Physique with any questions that you have on any of those courses. I'd be more than happy to help you out. All right, and welcome back once again, Instagram at The Drop Set Podcast. I would love to get messages, audio notes, video notes from people. I'll play those on here if you have questions, if you have feedback. If you just want to yell at me for a little bit, that's fine too. Maybe I would prefer not. I'd prefer questions, but I'll take whatever. I'm not that picky. Um, so as I mentioned before, I'm traveling today. I'm, as I'm recording this, it's April 29th. It's Monday. I fly out noon-ish, 12.30 on Wednesday, flying out to Oregon, stopping through Dallas on the way there, flying into Portland. Uh, it's a trip I made many, many times before, but um, I try not to do this when I have to stay on plan and be in prep. I've done it before. It's just always more annoying <laughs> to do it that way. Anybody who has been on prep and travel knows it's much easier to just like take a vacation and enjoy yourself and relax a little bit than it is to be like, no, everything has to be perfect. So I'm going to try and make everything perfect here. I think it's all pretty much within my reach. So what am I doing on this trip? What have I already done as far as legwork and getting prepared for this? Just because the stakes are high. I'm going to be five weeks out when this episode drops and uh, I'll have been there for a couple of days at that point. I'm going to be there through Tuesday of the following week. So, um, what I've done is sourced out a gym that I'm going to be hanging out at and adjusting my training schedule a little bit to accommodate my work days because I'm also working on this trip. I'm not taking days off from work, uh, so I'm still going to be doing client check-ins every day I'm out there. And uh, so finding a gym, uh, and it, there's going to be a one-day buffer where I kind of have to figure out the whole schedule because the thing is, I'm ostensibly going out there because I just haven't seen my family in forever. Really, my parents. I need to see my brothers and their families as well, um, just because the kids are growing up, et cetera. And I'm out here on the East Coast missing all of it. So uh, it's kind of kind of depressing when I think about it. Uh, but my parents getting older, having some health issues as well. So I just need to go out there and spend a little bit more time. I'm going now. I may go again over the summer, to be honest with you. So, um, so that's, it's kind of a, a sad onus for the trip. Um, but nonetheless, everybody's doing okay for right now, but you just start to get that sense as people get older, like, 
me spend a little bit more time here. So that's really what this trip is about. So the fact that I'm five weeks out from a show is irrelevant. Like, yeah, I can stick with that, but also like, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to enjoy myself, just not in the food sense, as I have done many times on this prep already. So um, the stuff that I've done in advance is source out the gym. And I did find a meal prep company called All In Meals out of Salem, Oregon, which is where I'm going to be staying. Um, and they have a good menu online and they show macros for everything. They have multiple portions and meal types available if you want to do low carb, if you want to do a larger portion, et cetera. So um, I was able to look through their menu, find a couple meals that I wanted to have for each day. And I'm going to source the remaining ones from a grocery store. But the stuff that I would typically meal prep, which for me are meals four and five, I'm going to let them do. Meals one, two, and three for me are just things that I can easily make, grab and go kind of stuff in a microwave, really easy. So I'll continue to do that. Uh, but uh, let them take care of the meal prep side of things. So I don't have to worry about like occupying my parents' kitchen, going to the grocery store and buying all the stuff for that. Like, cause whenever I do that, it's like, oh, I have to buy all the spices that I typically use cause they don't have those. And it's just like, it, make, it makes for a lot. So, uh, this way simplifies things a bit. I'm still going to have to hit the grocery store, get, you know, six days worth of stuff for meals one, two, and three. Pretty easy to manage that though. Uh, and then let them take care of the rest. Now they will deliver those meals to the gym where I'm going to. That's actually like one of their, a handful of local delivery partners just happens to be the gym that I had found as well. Just kind of worked out that way. So I'm flying out of here, uh, you know, I'll leave home around 12.30 on Wednesday. The flight leaves at like 2.30. Um, get into Portland that evening, and uh, depending on how tired I am, may stay in Portland, may drive down to Salem and stay in my place there. Let me just be staying in a hotel. Uh, from there, wake up on Thursday, do some work, do some cardio, go to the gym to lift, get my meals, bring them back, and then head to Albany where my parents live and spend the entire day with them. Um, and so the, the question I have right now is how long is all that morning stuff going to take? Because I don't want it to take a long time just because I want to spend more time with my parents. And if I end up cutting out a little bit on cardio, Hey, whatever. So be it, you know, people are going to want to take a nap in the afternoon. Great. I'll go for a walk around the neighborhood when they do that. So, um, the, the, the work thing, like I almost wish I would have taken this week off of work, but I didn't. So, um, the thing that's really kind of thrown me for a little bit of a loop is managing like client check-ins and stuff. Um, it doesn't take me a huge amount of time during the day to just do client check-ins, but it's several hours um, still. And so it does add up and it gives me a little bit of anxiety just as far as managing the schedule. Honestly, I have more anxiety about that than about anything related to prep. Um, just because I don't want to lose out on time with my parents because I'm worrying too much about workouts, cardio, and uh, managing uh, work work as well. So um, my goal when I'm there is to show my parents how to use um, DoorDash <laughs> and uh, get them set up on that um, just because they're at, at a point where like they could benefit from that every now and then. Uh, and also Instacart for grocery store delivery. So i um, going to be ordering some food, having it brought to the house. Won't be for me. I'm going to take them out to dinner once or twice. Again, won't be for me. I probably won't. Depending on how things go, like uh, I haven't done a high carb day in some time. So uh, I'm kind of planning on having room for like a larger, maybe almost free meal when I'm out there. We'll see how it goes. Um, I have two brothers who live out there, um, neither of which understand bodybuilding at all. I mean, my parents don't either. Nobody does. So... <laughs> Uh, but, uh, it'll be, you know, I'm already getting invitations like, Hey, come have dinner with us. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll bring mine. Okay. But like I have one brother who every time I'm there, he makes homemade ice cream and I was like, I can't do it, dude. Like make it. Yes, absolutely. But I can't have any, I'm sorry. So, uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for things to go haywire is the point from this. Just a lot of opportunities for things to go south and take a weird little dive into strange land. So uh, I just need to make sure that doesn't happen. Also, um, there's going to be a lot of driving around. So my brother, other brother, and parents all live in three different cities. They're not far apart, but there will be a lot of time spent in the rental car driving around in, in, in that little, you know, I would call it a triangle, but it's really more of an L shape than anything else. Um, and so I need to make sure like my meal prep bag is with me with my meals for the day and it, the ice pack is consistently frozen that kind of thing. So, uh, there's a lot to manage. There's a lot to manage. Um, but I think I got a handle on it. My biggest concern now is can I leave the house without forgetting anything? I'm not one for packing lists. What I do is I mentally run through my day. Like what are all the things that I need? So like toiletries really easy there, but I'm thinking like charging cables, 
you know, I want to bring uh, my gimbal for my cell phone because I will need to record a vlog for next week um, when I'm out there as well. So that goes up on Monday on YouTube. Um, the latest one, if I think to it, I will link over here as a card, wherever they go. Um, as a six, six week out update. So you can see where I'm at. Um, and th so there's a lot. Now that video that I typically do every week, I record it kind of like this, just at the computer, um, closer in. Um, but I'm like going over the numbers. I'm showing the progress video that I recorded for the week, interspersed some gym footage here and there. Um, next week is just going to be like, it's going to look very much like a hostage video. It's going to be me in a hotel room talking to the camera and that's it for like 15 minutes straight and just saying, pray for me, please. So, uh, it'll be a little less formal for sure. A little less produced, but, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to the trip. I'm kind of not, um, like I want to just be there. It's the travel that I don't really like. And it's also the fact that I have to, that, that I'm doing it while I'm on prep that I'm not really looking forward to either, but it's okay. So, um, I'll be all right. And, <laughs> We'll, we'll still uh, we'll be online here next week as well. Uh, I will get that episode planned before I leave, and then I'll shoot it on Wednesday when I come back and then get it up for Friday. So should be uh, should be no interruption in the podcast schedule. So that's all I've got for today, folks. So I appreciate you joining me here. Um, I would welcome and appreciate any thoughts that anybody has on any of the macro apps that we talked about in the first section there. Love to get your feedback on that and some thoughts on that too. It, was, it made a big difference for me. Like I have gone from like, uh, like dreading any time that I have to go into my fitness pal and log a food. And now using macro factor, I'm like, all right. Um, by the way, I'd like to thank today's sponsor for this video, macro factor. I'm kidding. They don't know who I am. Uh, nobody knows who I am. Nobody sponsored this. No, that's an honest review. That's it. So, um, Anyway, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I will check you back here next week. Hit me up on Instagram at the Drop Set Podcast. Leave a question. Leave a voice note. Leave a video note. Uh, talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind. Okay, that wraps up another episode, and thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please share it on social media and tag me on Instagram. I am at Darren underscore star. Also, please subscribe to the channel here if you haven't already, and feel free to check out any of those other videos that you see here as well. FiveStarPhysique.com has details on everything that I have to offer, including contest prep coaching, body transformation coaching, workout programs, swag, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for listening, and I will catch you all back here next week.